Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Ewa Women's University. Professor Kim, good afternoon. Thanks for coming on today. Good afternoon, Devin. Well, the Bank of Korea, in a new report on the global economy, sees U.S. GDP next year growing by 3 to 4 percent and continuing its strong recovery. Growth will be stronger in the first half of the year than a little weaker in the second. Uh, tell us about this report and what you make of it, Professor. The status of U.S. economy in next year is an important factor to every economy, including Korea. If U.S. economy accelerates in the next year, uh, that is going to be a positive momentum to Korean economic recovery. According to recent uh, Bank of Korea's report, uh, U.S. will have faster economic recovery next year with 3 to 4 percent economic growth, as you said, Devin. Uh, this is a very strong economic uh, growth considering U.S. potential economic growth or using full capacity growth is around 2 percent. Uh, Bank of Korea says uh, U.S. economic recovery path would be inverse U-shaped uh, next year with stronger growth in the first half. Also, U.S. labor market is improved early next year thanks to corporations' steady uh, investment. Uh, the report also expects uh, long-standing high inflation is stabilized in the second half of next year as uh, global production chain disruption uh, lessens. But Bank of Korea report points out that all this can be changed when COVID variant uh, situation worsens. Well, that's the big question overall. An optimistic uh, report aside from that. Uh, but last Friday, we saw stocks on Wall Street down again, the Omicron variant for one thing. Also, the Fed tapering and perhaps the uncertainty about the Biden administration's next big spending bill. What's the story in the global markets this week? Uh, U.S. stock ended last week on a downbeat note uh, with all major indexes dropping as investors worried about rising interest rates and uh, surge in COVID-19 cases that is slowing uh, economic recovery in the U.S. and Europe together. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has fallen in the five of the past six weeks, uh, while oil prices and bond yields fell in, the, in last Friday. The Dow Industrial weakened by 1.5 percent last Friday. NASDAQ Composite Index was between small gains and losses, ending the day down less than 0.1 percent. In Europe, the spread of the Omicron variant has raised the fears of further economic restrictions and a drag on economic activity to close the year. Paris and Frankfurt market dropped by 1.1 percent and 0.7 percent last Friday, but London market gained by 0.1 percent in the same day. All Asian markets in Hong Kong, Tokyo, Shanghai weakened uh, today as COVID-19 variant threat increases in the region. Well, Korean stocks down quite a bit today, too, the KOSPI especially, and that's true across the board for the big names. Volatility in the exchange rate, too. Uh, retail sh shares uh, hit hard, and some of the big export sectors like steel and chemicals. Tell us about the domestic market. Domestic market also dropped in a large scale today as Omicron has prompted uh, fr fresh restrictions ahead of Christmas and end of the, uh, end of the year holidays. But many investors are betting that higher vaccination rates uh, will mean government hold back from employing significant, significantly tougher uh, measures. Kospi lost by 1.8 percent. Kostak also retreated by 1.1 percent today. Uh, today's declines are led by foreign investors who net sold about 665 billion won in Kospi and Kostak markets uh, combined. In today's declining market, the top 20 largest capital stocks all dropped uh, except SK Bioscience. Along with Bank of England recent key interest rate hikes, uh, lots of central banks will follow this to control inflation. So domestic market would be more fluctuating until next year. Well, shifting gears, Professor, uh, we see data showing foreign currency deposits in Korea rose again to a new high last month as uh, the foreign currency assets of Korean companies in particular rose in value. Uh, last month, uh, the value of all these deposits together crossed $100 billion for the first time. Uh, what's boosting the deposits? What's the significance of it? According to Bank of Korea's data, uh, foreign currency deposits at commercial banks uh, record high in November on increased corporate deposits. 
uh, residents' outstanding foreign currency dominated deposits came to a fresh record about uh, 100, 103 billion US dollars as a end of November, up 2.25 billion dollars from the previous month. That represents the fourth consecutive month of on month increase of deposits. In understanding foreign currency deposits, residents include local citizens, uh, foreign, foreigners staying here for more than six months, and foreign companies. November's increase came as local companies' dollar deposit rose, uh, while individuals cut back uh, on their deposits on a weaker uh, local currency. Uh, corporate deposits stood at about uh, $85 billion as of end of November, up $2.56 billion from the previous month. Local corporations' dollar deposit increases are a related robust export of Korean companies. So along with strong export until next year, a foreign currency deposit increase will be continued until next year. That's the trend uh, for sure. And finally, Professor, this week we'll have numbers on producer prices from last month for the Bank of Korea, uh, other things like core inflation in the U.S. and home sales in the U.S. What's on your radar, Professor, in the days ahead? First of all, uh, producer price index is a very important leading indicator of consumer price index whose growth rate becomes the inflation. When production input factors prices increase, uh, prices for consumers also increases because producers raise the uh, prices of their products for sure. Uh, there were seven straight months uh, produce, producer price index increases from April at almost 9% growth on year in October. But since the oil price is a little bit stabilized in November, it is ex expected that November's uh, producer price index would be uh, stabilized than that of the October. Uh, Bank of Korea also releases its monetary policy plan for 2022 uh, in this week. Uh, this monetary policy plan uh, provides some hints about the next year's uh, timing of interest rate uh, increase. In government's plan for next year, uh, forecast of inflation was 2.2 percent, and economic growth was 3.1 percent, according to data released by government today. Uh, these figures are fundamental base uh, numbers for next year's government policies. They sure are. And, uh, Professor, we'll catch up on uh, all of that when it comes out uh, later this week. We'll have to leave it there for today. Thank you, as always, for coming on. Thank you very much.